In this segment, I'm going to demonstrate how to make plates using what's called a jolly mold or slump mold. Uh, molds are made of plaster. Here you see three different sizes. I'm going to attempt the 12 inch size today. Um, so what needs to happen is I need to roll out a slab of clay either on the slab roller or with a rolling pin to be the diameter of this mold. Now remember clay shrinks at much as 12 percent so I'm going to be sure to use my shrink measure, my shrink measuring stick to uh, determine how wide I want this bowl to be. So according to this, this is, this is obviously larger than, this is actually larger than 12 inches, but it's the right size for, for the shrink ruler measure. Now, um, I like to use clay as directly as possible, so I'm not going to mess with the mechanics of the slab roller. I like to use what I call the pizza man technique for making the slab because it just takes less, it takes fewer actions to get where I want to go. So I'm just going to wedge up my clay, smash it down into a kind of circle as I, as I uh, slam this down on the, on the canvas top table, notice that I'm doing it at an angle, and each time I do it in a different part of the slab. That way it's getting spread out as uniformly as possible. Now, that's not an exact science, so it's also helpful to have a rolling pin handy because I want the thickness of the slab to be as uniform as possible. Now I'm not going to get too worried about uh, the fact that it's not completely round because I'm going to trim off any part that's irregular. So I'm watching carefully to see if I've got the shape I want or the size of the shape I want. That's starting to look like it. Let's, let's have a look. Okay. Feels like it's a little on the thin side. So I'm going to try one more time to get a little bit closer to the diameter of the mold so that I'll have the, the, the right thickness as well. So it, the thickness of the slab is just as important as the diameter of the slab. So what I'm doing here is called wedging. And what wedging does is it homogenizes the moisture of the clay, so it's all uniform. And it dries out any unwanted air pockets that might have gotten trapped in an earlier stage. Okay, that's starting to be a little bit closer to round, 
and a little bit closer to the size I want, and much closer to the thickness. Yeah, that's much better. Okay. It appears I'm ready to go to the next step. So now I'm going to settle this down on the turn here of the contour. And then we're, we're going to go to the wheel. OK, so now I'm going to introduce the, the jig for the jolly mold. First, notice I've put pins in the wheel head. These holes here correspond to those pins. And there is a scored area on the bottom of the jig so you can feel where those are supposed to, you can't see them from this side. So you have to be able to feel them. So it's kind of like Braille um, to, to locate where the holes go for the jig. Okay. So notice that there's an opening here in the jig that corresponds with the, um, in the um, step here on the bottom of the jolly mold. And that's designed to fit neatly into that jig so that you don't have to, to spend any time uh, centering. It centers itself. Now, I made sure that I had an excess of clay on the rim here. So now I'm going to settle this down. It's not quite uniform thickness, so I'm going to settle that down so it's a uniform thickness. And then I'm going to cut, get my needle tool out. And I'm going to take this unwanted amount of clay off. One of the things I'm going to be doing in the next segment is finishing the rim once the clay is dry enough to be removed from the mold. You know, I just realized that I don't use an I don't use a needle tool. I just realized I, I don't use the needle tool on plaster because it's metal and it'll score the plaster. Instead, I use the clay knife, which is wood. So it's, it's less likely to harm the, the, the plaster. So I'm going to smooth out and round that rim in preparation for tomorrow when I finish the rim. And now, it's time to throw the it's time to throw the foot. Now the turn here is really important. So I ha I keep this example around as what for for what not to do. Uh, the aim of this is to get the walls as uniform as possible. And if you'll notice right here, there's a scooped out part right there, and that's because the recess of the plate is out here. But on this plate, the foot is too narrow. So it's really important to get the foot to land right on the turn. And I like to use this example of what not to do. So having said that, I'm going to want, you can see clearly that right here is where the contour on the inside of the plate turns. I'm going to want my foot there, not, no, no narrower than this turn. So I've made my slab thick enough that I can move clay out from the center to gather up the amount of clay I need for the foot. So what I'm doing is I'm compressing the clay against the plaster while pushing the clay out 
from the inside. I'm keeping my sponge handy to keep the clay lubricated so that it doesn't drag. Now I may have to do that more than once to get enough clay for the foot. See, this is, this is not enough, so I'll, I'll have to go back and start again. This time I'm going to apply a little bit more pressure so I can get a little bit more result. Oh, do we have an example of a plate that has an insert handy? Yeah, that's another consideration that needs to be made. Um, yeah, okay. So when clay is being fired, it becomes malleable again. And so it's vulnerable to moving. And this much of a span is vulnerable to a sway. So to prevent the bottom of the bowl from slumping in the firing, we need to put a secondary foot here near the center so that um, it doesn't allow the bowl to sway. So I'm going to put a second, secondary foot here. Now, there's a point at which I can't do the, what I want accurately enough. So I'm going to need to get my metal rib out because I want the boundary between the bottom of the bowl, bottom of the plate and the foot to be more precise. I can't do it, I can't do that precisely with my fingers. So I'm going to use a metal rib instead to get the kind of precision I want. Okay, so notice that the foot now is wide enough that it lands right on the turn. Notice that I've got an interior um, uh, sec secondary foot to keep the bowl from swaying. So for all intents and purposes, I'm done with this for now. I'm gonna put this in the um, damp room and then tomorrow we'll pop this off of the mold and see if there's any trimming or any um, uh, design refinement that needs to be done on the, on the rim.